in any survival game, starting out is always the most exciting, but also confusing. Where to go, what to avoid, and where to get early secret loot. These are just some of the things I would like to share with you so that you can have a stress-free start on your journey in Entrouded. Hope you like the view, it's quite the eye-opener. First things first, don't follow the lights, not yet anyway. What we'll be doing first is, over here is your starter cave. There are lots of goodies, make sure you don't forget the first chest here. You kick them open just like a thug. And bandages, anything you pick up will also be placed into the hotbar if you've got space. Torches are a handy light source and you can also fight with them. And what many people have been tempted to do is go around there and then down the ladder. But the best route is you go down this way and here you can pick yourself up some thermal detonators. As you can see there's a collapsed rubble here. What I'm going to do is blow it up. There we go, I managed it in the end with all four. And this is where you can get some great early game starter loot. Hatchet makes a big difference if you can smash stuff up. Make sure you break things up as much as you can. You want to gather up as much of your loots as possible. And here is where you will first encounter the shroud. Your blue haze with the white glowing mushrooms. And to start off with, the base amount of time that you get to spend in the shroud is five minutes. After that five minutes is up, your health doesn't start going down slowly, it just kills you instantly. With the hatchet, these are no problem at all. And they're actually really slow. If I show you here, just keep going around and kite them and then get behind. And you can do control to dodge. These are a good source of your spores. You'll be needing plenty of those later on in the game, along with cloth for your armor and to also make bandages. And you've got plenty of time in the starter zone to get back out of the shrine. I've got three torches now, so save using up my durability on the hatchet before I get a chance to repair it. And just smash things up with your torch. And these beacons you come across, they activate when you get close. And when you die, this is where you'll end up. And in the harder zones, if you come across one of these, it generally means that shit's about to go down. Before heading to the lights to build your first base and place down your flame altar, what you want to do is collect what you can out of these little town areas. All will come in very handy. The hatchet, let's get ourselves a bit of wood. And the first thing I advise that you craft is the shield. This makes combat a lot easier with the things that move a bit quicker. I'll demonstrate this later on. In this first little town here, smash up everything here for your loot. And also, there's a second of the secret chest arrows that I'll show you. There's going to be four in total. So look out for hidden walls, the chest, and wooden arrows. After you've got two bones, a great ideal starting weapon is also the wand, as this will then give you a bit of a ranged option. It hasn't got as much range as a bow, but this coupled with your shield, and you've got no worries with the shield and the wand. You need string for your armor, the roof pieces, and also doors of the base of your house. You're gonna to need to gather up yourself plenty of the fiber from the plants. Each time you run across them, just press E and make sure you grab them as you go. Down to this lower part of the town here. In the game, the stamina is quite important. To get yourself more water, which helps with your stamina, you can come to the well and see that your water bottle will replenish, and you can stack them up. Down into the shroud here, see what's there. With the one, because these move so quickly, you can pretty much kill them before they can get anywhere near you. Watch out in the shroud for these spore things here. If you get too close, what happens is you get a ring, and that will speed up the timer that you get within the shroud. Make sure you splash up all of these bell things, because they're a great source of cloth that you'll need for your armor. And over here, if you haven't found any yet, you can collect up some arrows. And the bow really is a great weapon for your ranged attacks as it's got way more range than the wand. The chest can end up being hidden away in all of the nooks and crannies. When it comes to collecting your foods and cooking your meats, try not to put your meat on your hot bar. The amount of times I've given my food to have food poisoning already is far too many to count. Up to the little campfire, press E, and then you can scroll along with your mouse wheel, do what you wish to cook. 
And watch out for silly little monsters that come around like that and stab you in the back. With a shield, as long as you've got the stamina, which will uh, goes down quite slowly when you're blocking these guys. You got no worries at all. And if you time the bl but if you get too cocky, that's what the bandage is coming handy for. Time the block right like that, you end up stunning them. And they get stunned for quite a long time. Right, now I'll go back and pretend to be Gordon Ramsay again. Just hold down to cook. And as you can see, just in about 10 seconds, maybe 5 seconds, your meat will be ready. If you hold it for too long, you'll end up burning it and it will turn into tar. It's turn night time. The monsters that come out now are a little bit stronger and it's mainly the spore guys that uh, you saw stab me in the back just then. But you don't get many of those in the town area here. Just to show you something else, I'll pop back up to the other little town. Torch on, there we go. Right, with the beds. With the bed, it will speed up the night cycle by 60% and the night time doesn't last very long anyway. If you're in a group, it will increase by 15% per person that is on there if there's four of you and then do the maths for the rest of it the more of you there are the more that would have to be sleeping at the same time to get your full amount of 60 percent just like in any other game anything that looks like a rabbit i won't kill it but the goats that you come across tend to run away and they're hard to get hold of that's why if you've got the bow it makes things a lot easier to get hold of them and what you're after from the goats is the animal fur I'll show you why later on as well. Here you are at the starting area, location reached. Press J for your journal and click on your quests and claim a spot for your base. For now, just placing down the flame altar is ideal. What we will need are some rocks to be able to place down the, your altar. There we go, I've got plenty of stone. You just need the five for your flame altar. Pop that onto your hotbar and the red border you see is the amount of land you get from using, placing down the flame altar and the size of the base that you can build. You can upgrade the flame altar and build a bigger base as you progress through the game. You are not alone, there are other survivors that are drowsing in nearby ancient vaults. Find them so they may aid in your journey. Go gently, one beckons nearby, just outside of the shroud's grasp. Build yourself a workbench, and these are great for crafting and repairing because all you have to do, as soon as you've opened it up, everything in your inventory is automatically repaired. Great little feature, I'm really pleased that they put this in. I'll go over the building later on. You can get honey and wax from the bees. And if they're high up in the tree and you can't reach them, it's what you can use the wand or the bow for. Now these bees can get a bit angry sometimes when you're after their honey. That's why it's handy to have the shield. Let them hit me. As you can see, they pack quite a punch. But they are weak to magic, so one hit with the wand and they're gone. And beehive gives you a plus 15 stamina recharge rate the honey from the beehive that is sorry instead of just chopping down the trees with this hatchet it's actually much better if you craft yourself a proper axe and a pickaxe is also very good not only for harvesting the stone but i'll show you a little trick with it later on with the hatchet you are a logger on steroids and you chop down the trees a hell of a lot quicker If your stamina depletes a bit, have a little drink of water to boost that back up. You see any of these dead trees or bushes in the shroud? They're a nice easy way of getting hold of twigs. Get yourself plenty of arrows for your bow. I forgot some torches. If you use the wand, it can actually light up the way for you. In case I forgot to mention it by the way, Sprint is your standard shift button. And armor, you can craft yourself some rags now with the string and the cloth. Chest, the starting armor of the cloth and the string isn't exactly great, but it's better than nothing. If you right click on any of your armor pieces, if it's anything you've crafted, you can just delete it if you don't require it anymore. If you've picked up any weapons that are actually dropped, if you right click them, you can actually salvage some of their materials. The walls are also a great way of getting more armor and more fur to make 
the better armor. I'll show you how to unlock that and how you craft it. And over here, you'll find a little cave. And here is where you'll generally find yourself a couple of wolves. Just on the map here. That's where you start, and it's just around the corner. When you're smashing stuff up, sometimes when it's lower down to the floor, it's a bit awkward to actually smash it open with your hatchet. As you attack, you end up moving forward each time, away from what you might actually want to hit. With your pickaxe, because the animation is just straight down, these are great for smashing up your items to save your durability on your weapons. And also, breaking up any beds you come across will yield you some metal scraps. Obviously, I'll save any of the health potions for anything harder, especially when you come across the first boss. Before you head out, even though you've now got your armor and weapons, next thing I would advise you to make is a bit of storage. If you go into your workbench, go storage and just make yourself one chest. This is to save carrying a lot of stuff that you're not going to need whilst you're out exploring. In this game, just like Valheim, there is three food buffs that you can actually get, or a water buff and then two foods. Have yourself some honey for the stamina, then the grilled wolf meat, plus two constitution for 20 minutes. Don't try two meats at the same time, because it's the same buff, it will not stack. Mushrooms are for your intelligence. I need plenty of them. With the map and get into your quests, it's M to open it up and then you can move it around with your left mouse button. The map is absolutely huge, you can keep dragging for ages and ages and there is a hell of a lot to explore. If you press C, it will center it back to where you actually are. Find the sleeping survivor, you can set this as a Y point to put a beacon in the sky. If you don't like the standard, you can actually create your own markers for different areas on the map. You just right click, create your marker, and you've got colors and four different symbols to choose from. You can only actually have one waypoint up at a time. Left click to add the way marker or remove the marker or remove the symbol completely. Then at the top of your bar, as you can see, you've got an exclamation mark for where you need to go to. You can line this up and it's a nice handy guide to get into your quest to save opening up the map each time. It would be even nicer if they added a little mini map. At night time, I wouldn't bother venturing out too far away, especially if you've got a long way to travel to get to your quest area. I will wait until it's daytime. Adventure by day crafter by night time let me show you where you can get your first npc friend from before we go venturing too far if you just come down the slope not far from the starting zone what we're after is some shroud wood from any of the trees within the shroud it doesn't have to be any particular or special tree any size one will do eight of the shroud wood and what we're after is a glider the glider is a great and fun way of traversing a large amount of area, depending on how high up a cliff you jump from. You right click to equip them, you don't have to worry about any durability on the glider after you've equipped them. Skills, I won't cover just yet, as there's an awful lot to it, and just so many different paths for you to choose from. Now that I've got the glider, I'll show you how to get your first NPC. Let's just call him the blacksmith. As you enter new areas, as you're flameborn, you will light up any of the lamps as you go. A quicker way to the blacksmith is over this bridge, but unfortunately, you'd actually need a grappling hook to be able to do this. But a lot of times when you're just starting out, you might have access to the metal scrap and the items needed to craft a grappling hook. So I'll show you that it's no biggie, and really you're probably better off to start with taking the walking path through the shroud as there's some extra cool items that you can get along the way. It's handy to have your bandages on your hotbar. It's always safer when you're starting out to stay on the path of the shroud as well. There we go, we've got the one ring. Game over, that's end game material. Just right click to equip those as well. And you don't have to worry about durability either. It's nice that you don't have to worry about your armor breaking to be honest. Now, if you come across any of these little canisters, it will reset the time in the shroud that you've got. Come up through here. And just take a right up these stairs. Whenever you're going up and climbing, make sure you have actually got plenty of stamina. You don't want to be falling back down at a great height and that running out. You sit down by any campfire as you can see, the rest of buff will start ticking up and give you up to the maximum you can get with just a campfire. And this is where we're heading to. A couple of different ways you can take these guns on, either by stealth, or what I'm going to do if you've got yourself a bow. Over there, you'll see a barrel with a little red dot on it. 
And that's the end of him. Because I'm in staff, the other thing hasn't got a clue what's going on. The weak spots in the mobs are at the head and the back. And these guys, I will show you, because they are quicker. If you let them get a combo on you, they're going to take your health down pretty quickly. Can still parry these as well and get them stunned. But it is a little bit harder to time as their attacks are quicker than the other guys. Make sure you check out any little nooks and crannies as you never know what you're going to find. Especially up inspicuously placed ladders. Or more chests. And keep an eye out for these little anvils. If you've done a lot of fighting you're out in combat you come across these areas. And press E and they will act as a workbench. Repairing all your gear. Won't bother sneaking. There's another chap in here. Here's the one. If you die, you press E to respawn. Then I'm back at the base. That's what happens when you don't pay attention. You end up talking whilst you're fighting. <laughs> when you die, the great bonus is that if you notice, everything on your hotbar and everything on your character is still on you the only thing you actually drop is some of the stuff in your top inventory so if you keep anything valuable or anything useful in your hot bars down here and all the stuff you don't mind dropping in the top then it's not too bad if you die because then it's just a case of running back and it's a bit of time wasted but you don't have to worry about say for instance a naked planes run in Valheim oh the good old days for me in a way I'm not knocking the game at all because it does make it more challenging doing that but going by the size of this map i'm glad there's some fast travel points and easy ways of navigating and when it's not too harsh penalizing you when you're not great at combat like i am combo. four combo Bye, bitch. There we go. And here we go. Hi, Oswald. How you doing, buddy? I'll show you how to spawn him in in just a bit. Before you leave this area, though, another little secret place is just behind this canister over here. And you will need the lockpick. That's why I kept the metal scraps on me. Metal scar mace, eh? There we go. Now, what's real nice is after you've placed down the flame altar, any one you've got, you can then use it to fast travel. Well, I could fast travel back to the cinder vault where you start, or fast travel to your home. Summoning staff, they don't want to get you gathering loads of stuff all around the world, you just need a couple of twigs. Then you equip the staff and then tab, and then you choose which one you wish to summon. And place him wherever you want in your area. Get some new quests, but what I concentrate on is your full armor set. And prioritize that you do your chest your legs then your helm and then worry about the gloves and the boots after because they're the ones that give you your most protection but this is where you need your animal fur from the wolves and the goats if you come across any of the orange looking trees these are a great source of resin just grab it and chuck it in your chests for now because it will come in handy later on for building your base you're going to need to get yourself plenty of stone plenty of wood and the plant fiber to build in the first thing you're going to need to do is grab yourself a construction hammer just need a bit of stone for that place that into one of your hot bars and once you've got it tab to enter your building mode and with your mouse button and scroll scroll along for the different shaped pieces press alt for more different options as well there's an awful lot to choose from but what i suggest you do just to start with is go with the four meter pieces and some of these take more blocks than others what you need to do is craft yourself some stone blocks from your wood blocks and the plant fiber roof blocks don't waste all of your plant fiber in crafting these but sort out the foundations first for these blocks 64 build pieces out of a possible 1200 blocks that i have if you scroll along you will see that that number changes and the big thick blocks use 256 it's a lot more economical if you just start out using the thin blocks and the four meter ones rotate using r i'm so used to with valheim using the middle mouse button hold down q and shift for forwards and backwards 
and X is for toggling it to snap on and off the grid. You can get a bit more fine detail, but for now, just snap it to the grids. It will make life a lot easier for yourself. I won't make it too big, but you can't build walls directly on the altar. You stood up in the crate. That was a stupid place for me to place it. Move the cursor up and down. You can see that it's snapping to place at the different heights. That's a pretty nice build system. I'm sure it will be improved on in time. But the stuff does generally tend to mesh together quite nicely in the voxel base engine. You'll be surprised just in a small base like this that you soon run out of blocks. If you right click on any of the build pieces you've placed, you can end up getting the materials back again. This is handy, especially if you just want a small base to start off with. Or if you've made any little mistakes. Doors and windows, you need to craft these at the workbench. And for a double door, you'll need to do two of the single ones. You need more plant fibre. If you right click you can split down stacks and another little handy feature they've added if you do shift R you can then deposit whatever you've stacked previously. Nice way of sorting out your storage system. Right now let's sort out the roof. Now when it comes to building the roof it is a bit awkward and janky at times. So I'll show you an easy or easier way of doing it. You start off at the four corners, just resting these and snapping them just at the top of the wall. Pressing R to rotate, get each one in place. Run it up so that it's just sticking down a little bit on the edge. Do that on all four corners. Then do yourself a favour and chuck yourself down some stairs to get yourself up higher because the camera angle in this game at the moment and being able to just snap roofing pieces together is rather awkward. You can walk away, walk along, line up the standard wall pieces so that it's all nice and even and joined together. There we go. Now you want your next corner piece. Line up, right bang in the corners again. This is much easier to do and line up when you're on the top of the building than down below. Trust me, I've tried. I don't want you having to have the stress of it the same as I did. It's taken me several hours to figure out an easier way of doing these roofs. If you'd like me to spend many more hours in researching other things for you, then if you subscribe, you won't miss out on any future content. As you can see, that didn't line up properly. Just right click to get rid of it and start again. It comes to a nice point at the top, joining all of these together. Then all you need to do, get rid of your stairs and you're done. I hope you are fun and intro I'll see you soon and take it easy.